realization came during my night shift in the emergency department. A family of four arrived with severe food poisoning symptoms, vomiting, abdominal cramps, and dehydration. As I treated them and took their history, one detail stood out. They had all eaten leftover fried rice from a meal prepared two days earlier. What seemed like a convenient dinner choice had turned into a medical emergency that could have been easily prevented. In my 15 years as a gastroenterologist, I've seen numerous cases of food poisoning linked to improperly stored rice, yet most people remain unaware of this specific risk. The culprit? Bacillus cereus, a bacteria that forms heat-resistant spores capable of surviving the cooking process. While the initial cooking kills active bacteria, the spores can activate, multiply, and produce toxins when rice sits at room temperature. My own understanding of this risk deepened after participating in a hospital study tracking foodborne illness sources. Reese emerged as a surprisingly common contributor, accounting for approximately 4.5% of bacterial food poisoning cases in our database. What alarmed me was how preventable these incidents were with proper knowledge. The danger develops in stages. First, B. Serious spores naturally present in raw rice survive the cooking process. When cooked rice remains at room temperature between 40F 140F, these spores germinate into active bacteria that multiply rapidly, doubling every 20 minutes in ideal conditions. Within one five hours, the bacteria population can reach levels capable of producing two types of toxins that directly attack your digestive system. What makes rice particularly problematic is its ideal combination of moisture, nutrients, and starch that creates a perfect environment for bacterial growth. According to research published in the Journal of Food Protection, cooked rice left at room temperature can develop unsafe bacterial levels faster than many other cooked foods. Symptoms typically emerge 1-5 hours after consumption and include nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramping, and diarrhea. While healthy adults usually recover within 24 hours, these symptoms can be significantly more dangerous for vulnerable populations, young children, elderly individuals, pregnant women, and those with compromised immune systems. In a particularly concerning case from my practice, an immunocompromised patient required hospitalization for three days after consuming rice that had been improperly stored in their refrigerator for nearly a week. This extreme case demonstrates how what seems like a minor food safety oversight can have serious consequences for certain individuals. The most troubling aspect is the invisibility of contamination. Contaminated rice often looks, smells, and tastes completely normal. The bacteria and their toxins don't produce obvious signs of spoilage, creating a false sense of security. Even reheating won't guarantee safety as the curious toxins are heat-stable and remain active even after thorough reheating. My approach to Reese safety follows specific guidelines developed through both clinical experience and food safety research. Immediately after cooking, Reese should be consumed or cooled quickly. If storing for later use, cool it within one hour, rather than letting it gradually come to room temperature. Divide large portions into smaller, shallow containers to accelerate cooling before refrigeration. Refrigerated rice should be stored at 40F or below and consumed within 24, 48 hours, not the 3-5 days many people assume is safe. When reheating, 
ensure the rice reaches at least 165 F throughout to kill any active bacteria, though this won't destroy existing toxins. Most importantly, never leave cooked rice unrefrigerated for more than two hours or one hour in warm environments above 90 F. What distinguishes rice from many other leftovers is the specific growth pattern of Bacillus cereus. This bacteria reproduces exceptionally well in starchy environments, explaining why rice and pasta show similar risk profiles. The spore's heat resistance means that normal cooking temperatures don't eliminate the risk entirely proper storage becomes your critical defense. A study from the Food Safety Authority found that approximately 63% of home cooks were unaware of the specific risks associated with leftover rice, with many regularly leaving rice dishes at room temperature for extended periods before refrigeration. This knowledge gap explains why these preventable illnesses continue to occur. I found that the simplest approach is to cook only what you'll consume immediately or follow proper cooling procedures religiously. When I prepare rice for my family, I set a timer for cooling and packaging to ensure we never exceed the safe window. This habit becomes automatic with practice.